Okay, this is a short presentation about simple stoichiometry. I'll show you the old way and then I'll try to convince you of a new way of doing stoichiometry that gets students the right answer almost every time. Let's just talk about what a balanced chemical equation means. So what I have here is a simple balanced chemical equation where two magnesium atoms are reacting with one oxygen molecule to produce two units of magnesium oxide, or in the grander scheme of things, we could say that two moles of magnesium atoms react with one mole of oxygen molecules to produce two moles of magnesium oxide. Within this, we have some implied conversion factors. So what this ultimately means is that two moles of magnesium are equivalent to one mole of oxygen, and that is also equivalent to two moles of magnesium oxide uh, as per the uh, balanced chemical equation. So we can write these in other ways. We could write these as ratios and use them as factor label conversion factors. So the ratio of two moles of magnesium to one mole of oxygen, or flipping that around, one mole of oxygen to two moles of magnesium oxide. Uh, two moles of magnesium oxide correspond to two moles of magnesium. So all these can be uh, used as I've written them or uh, flipped upside down. So uh, let's talk about stoichiometry. So uh, a simple question may ask how many moles of oxygen are required to react with 0.65 moles of magnesium. The classical way of solving this is to just use our uh, conversion factors that we just came up with. So I've got 0.65 moles of magnesium. I want to get rid of moles of magnesium, so I'm going to put that in the denominator and I'm going to put my mole ratio of oxygen in the numerator. So since the coefficient on oxygen was 1 and the coefficient on magnesium was 2, those become the numbers that go along with those moles uh, for our dimensional analysis factor label uh, type of solution to the problem. So when I do that, I get 0.38 moles to two sig figs. We could uh, have a follow-up question, and many of the stoichiometry problems will have follow-ups, parts A's, B's, C, D's, and so on. So here I may further wonder how much magnesium oxide it can make in terms of moles. So if I start with the moles that I was given initially, and then use my ratios for comparison, I know that two moles of magnesium oxide are produced every time two moles of magnesium atoms are consumed, so I can just run that through and I would expect to produce 0.65 moles of magnesium oxide. This is going to be a classical treatment of how uh, we could do a stoichiometry problem. So what I am concerned with here is I've been given 10 grams of sodium carbonate and I need to figure out how much iron nitrate that I need to react with that. So. In order to do this, I'm going to have to find the molar masses so that I can convert the gram quantities into mole quantities. And once I have the mole quantities of the iron nitrate, I can convert it back into a gram quantity. So if you don't remember how to do this, take a look at the molar mass video. Uh, basically, you uh, count the number of each atom that's present and find the molar masses on the periodic table and multiply accordingly and then add all the individual uh, types of atom masses uh, together. So what I'm starting with here is 10 grams of sodium carbonate and the only way I can compare between two different substances is using moles. So the first step is going to be to uh, get rid of grams and get into moles. So I'm going to use the molar mass of sodium carbonate. So effectively now I am in units of moles of sodium carbonate, and this is where I'm going to make my comparison. So I would use the mole ratios uh, for uh, iron nitrate and sodium carbonate. So I'm going to use the coefficients as my uh, ratios of comparison. So two moles of iron nitrate are consumed every time three moles of sodium carbonate are consumed. So using the label cancellation. Uh, all the labels would cancel except for moles of iron nitrate. I didn't want to know the moles of iron nitrate, I wanted to know the grams. So the next thing I'm going to have to use is the molar mass of the iron nitrate, putting the moles on the bottom and the grams on the top. So all the labels are in the right spots, so if I just multiply across and divide by everything in the bottom, I should end up with the correct answer, in this case 15.2 grams of iron nitrate. I've found in the past that students have some uh, 
challenges in terms of applying this uh, method here. Uh, I've got another method that uh, I kind of partially used myself, but I had a student that was very effective at uh, using this, and she showed me what she was doing one time, and I just thought it was just the best uh, method ever, so I'll share that with you. What she was doing was she was tabulating, and I can see that uh, in this table here on the far left, I've got moles, grams per mole, moles, and then coefficient. That top line should say grams, so this here should be grams. So uh, I'm going to change that to, to grams there. Uh, so what I want to tabulate uh, is anything from the word problem that I already know. And the only thing I know here is that I've got 10 grams of sodium carbonate. So that I'm going to fill that into my table. And uh, from that point on, uh, in order to get into moles, because I'm going to use moles to compare things, I need the molar masses. And I can fill the molar masses that I'm concerned with into the middle line of the table. And quite often uh, in follow-up uh, questions, you might be asked about the products uh, as well as reactants here. So I always tell students that if they can't think of anything else to do on a stoichiometry problem, show me that you can come up with the correct molar masses. And remember, these are per one mole. We don't include the coefficients in these molar masses because literally the label is grams per one mole, uh, not grams per three or two or six moles. So in order to get to moles, remember just like in the uh, shown at the bottom, our first step was to divide by the molar mass. So what I'm doing uh, when I'm moving down the table is I'm going to be dividing, oops, sorry, our, our, I forgot to mention that our units of, com of comparison are going to be the uh, coefficients effectively three moles and two moles so when I want to get the actual moles moles represented by 10 grams of sodium carbonate I'm going to divide down so that's what I'm trying to emphasize here so um, I've got 0 0.0943 moles of sodium carbonate represented in the reaction that I'm actually doing and the neat thing is that uh, these work out to be ratios so um, the ratio of the moles that I have compared to 3 uh, for the sodium carbonate has to be equal to uh, the same ratio over 2. So I can solve this ratio by cross multiplying effectively. And what I get is 0 0.0628 moles. And I needed grams of the iron nitrate. So since I divided down, I'm going to multiply up. And once I do that, I get 15.2 grams. I got the same answer that we just got by the longer factor label method. I found that you know most students can probably do this twice as fast as the other method. Okay, so like I said, there oftentimes are follow-up questions here. And uh, one possible follow-up is once I know the amount of sodium carbonate and iron nitrate I need to use, I can calculate the amount of iron carbonate that I expect to find at the end of the reaction. So the ratios are going to be true according to their uh, coefficients. So these ratios are all equal to one another. So I'm looking for that fi that last unknown ratio and I can either use my 0 0.0943 over 3 or my 0 0.0628 moles over 2 uh, in my cross multiplying uh, solution to that. So effectively I've got x over 1 mole uh, that I'm trying to solve there. And when I do the math, I got 0 0.0314 moles of iron carbonate. And when I added up all the atoms involved, remembering that that 3 outside the, uh, the parentheses there multiplies all of the atoms inside the parentheses. So make sure you know, uh, that keep an eye on that. And then since I want grams, I'm going to multiply up, and I'm going to multiply 0 0.0314 times uh, 291.73 and I get 9.16 grams and you know that when I did the uh, calculation on the bottom I got 9.17 grams and like I always say if we only disagree in the last digit we can still be friends. I think this may be the end of my presentation here so uh, hopefully that gives you kind of an insight on how to approach stoichiometry.